Well, it looks as though it's time for the advent calendar to end. That means, officially, we are now on the day. Christmas, if you celebrate it, otherwise 20th of December. In any case, I'm out of things to pull out of the calendar. So, here's what I want to do. Kind of like I did for my birthday earlier this year, I want to give an update on my favorite toy line of all time. For our big end of the advent calendar celebration, we're going to go through literally all of my Hasbros, as well as all of my Hasbro continuations, the Mattel Retros, the Hastel Toys, the Zombie Sailors, some customs. We're going to be going through each and every one of these figures one by one. Just give a little brief description of each. Just to be clear, I do not have a full set by any means of any of these guys. Um, and especially my Hasbros, these aren't all pristine condition. But I do love them, and I do want to show them off, and I do want to share them and give them a big video. I want to make this clear. For the most part, I'm not going to be doing these in any particular order. There's a reason I pulled these guys out, though. This was the very first batch of Hasbros I ever got. It was during the very early weeks of the uh, of the lockdowns. I had gone to a uh, a open air flea market. Literally, I just wanted to walk around, and there weren't many people there because you know it was not a good time. Not a good time. Um, but as I was walking around, someone was selling these and I was petrified. Like I, I was really like, because it was the early days of, of the pandemic, I was terrified to buy them, but there was something about this, getting all these characters at once. And he only wanted, like, I think to get all these, I paid 50 bucks. I, uh, I, I bought them and then I wiped them down with as many, uh, paint safe cleaning solutions as I could left them on the porch for three days you know just little moments when we were all scared and not too sure what to do but these guys are always going to be special to me because they were my first ones these were my introduction to my favorite toy line now so I want to go through them first and then we're going to get into who I've gotten since then that's when we're going to stop having any particular order aside from just grouping toy lines together I mean, as good a place to start as any is Hulk Hogan. Now this is Hulk Hogan version two? I'm always bad with the versions, but it's 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 the bear hug slash 24 inch Python Hogan. One of the very few unique figures in the entire line. They never reuse this gimmick. Uh, this figure I think is kind of unduly hated. I love this Hogan. I love this kind of uh, really bugged out expression. I love that he's shown off the 24 inch pythons. I love the fact that there's no other Hasbro figure even kind of like him. I understand why people don't like him. I, they don't like him because he takes up so much space on the shelf because he's kind of limited in what he can do. But like, I'm fine with that. I adore this Hogan. He's my favorite Hasbro Hogan. Uh, of course I have version three actually on the way. It's a shame that I wasn't able to hold off on recording this because I actually have a couple more <laughs> that are going to be here next week, but for right now at least, he is my favorite Hasbro Hogan. Can't talk Hogan without Andre, and you can see he has some paint scuffing on his torso, a little bit on his feet. Now, I made the point of saying that I'm not showing you guys a pristine collection. These guys, for the most part, seem to be childhood survivors, but I kind of prefer it that way. I like the charm of it more. Um, but also, I do really enjoy this Andre. I love his expression. The fact that he's always kind of looking up, just make him seem a little bit more haughty. Uh, his gimmick's weird, though. It's really just kind of a... It's like he can body slam you, basically. So the idea is that you take his hands, and you go like this, and... Uh, uh, a lot of Andres do not have their gimmick anymore. I wonder why. Hot Rod, Roddy Roddy Piper. Now, this is from, like, WrestleMania 3 with the longer hair, but still a great little Hot Rod. His gimmick is, you take the hand back, oh, my apologies, you take the hand like this, and boop, there we go, you get like an uppercut. Um, I enjoy, enjoy it, my hot rod's starting to get worn out, but his gimmick still works. My biggest issue with this guy is because of his step and pose, it's actually kind of hard to keep him balanced on the shelf sometimes. Ah, it's Party Marty of the Rockers. It took me forever to get a Sean to go with this Marty genetic. But yeah, he's just one of the jumper molds, it's called the jumpers, I assume mostly because you know, the Rockers used it first, well, them and the Warrior. Um, this is not a good gimmick. This might be my least favorite gimmick in the entire toy line, actually. But, hey, Marty looks fine. 
people are going to crucify me. I don't remember if this one is Luke or Butch. I'm pretty sure this one is Luke. Now, his whole thing is you take his arm and he stomps. I actually really like that because it's it's something that you would literally watch on wrestling. That's how they make the big impact noise is they stomp while they punch. So it's a cute little reference to that. And also, the Bushwhackers are just fun, aren't they? Now, talking about tag teams, and I have both of them right here. I'm going to put them in together. You have to love Road Warrior, Animal, and Hawk. Like, seriously, possibly the single most popular important tag team ever done incredibly well. I've always loved the red from the WWF days. Um, unfortunately, I am missing a handful of spikes, but otherwise the paint's actually pretty solid. My biggest issue is, of course, we do have a jumper here, and even worse, look at that. Oh, he looks like a Tic Tac dispenser. I'm not big on that. Pez dispenser, rather. And then, this one's good, though. Just using the old Hogan body slam action. Overall, like, in terms of tag teams, as represented by the Hasbro line, the Road Warriors are probably the best ones. There's not many tag teams that they completed, and the ones they did, like, usually you're kind of having to grin and bear it. These are just really good. Someone on my Mount Rushmore of wrestling, Jake the Snake, huge reason as to why I was willing to buy this one in the first place was because it meant I would get Jake in my first assortment of figures. I adore this guy. So good. Great expression with kind of raised eyebrow. Um, his action... I'm not big on this punching on a lot of the other figures, but I do like it for Jake. It does work. Um, unfortunately, I don't have Damien. That's something I want to hunt down, is the Damien that goes to this Jake. But all in all, I really like this figure still. Typhoon is fine. Really, the most uh, kind of sad thing about Typhoon was I was convinced that Earthquake was in the slot when I saw him, and he was not. So because of that, I have a weird resentment towards this Typhoon. That's not fair, and I recognize it's not fair, but it is there. Uh, the most interesting thing about this figure is they painted in his, um, I guess you could call his pubis mound. What I would call that is his dick fat. Um, <laughs> I don't know why they felt the need to paint his inner thighs in, uh, but he has a good little gimmick. And, you know, I like Typhoon. You know, this poor guy, Fred Ottman, had to be Typhoon, which is probably like the peak of his career, honestly, because he was also Tugboat. He was the shock master, but he seems like such a lovely guy, such a nice, friendly person. Yeah, uh, Murderfly was in that assortment as well. I, you know, I've never figured out, should I call him Murderfly or Super Murder? In any case, he's a jumper. He's fine. Uh, I mean, he can do the... I forget what he called it, but basically the Spider-Man hand. He had a name for it, I just don't remember what it was called. Um, overall, one of the weaker figures in the assortment. This initial assortment, I should say. I'm sure he's probably great for the toy line, I don't know. Another jumper, and honestly, one of the few jumpers I actually really like, Ultimate Warrior version 1. Um, still a bad gimmick, but there's something about how they actually sculpted Warrior where it doesn't actually, like, take me out of it that much. I think it's maybe they made the legs a bit thicker than usual. Here, let me pull, uh, let me pull something in here. Yeah, the legs are a little bit thicker and they're more well-defined. So I think proportionally he works better, and that's why I like him more. And also, the colors are great. This is not my favorite Vintage Warrior, but it's very close to being my favorite Vintage Warrior. Green suited Million Dollar Man, great one. Kinda like the Bushwhacker, he also has his stomping punch gimmick. Really good on that one, still super strong. I've always liked the Green Suit Million Dollar Man, not my preferred costume for him though. And also, this face sculpt just isn't as good as the other Million Dollar Man. Um, I love version 1 Million Dollar Man so much more. Um, even though his face sculpt and the face paint are a lot more simple, they actually convey the character better, I think. Plus, I prefer the black suit to the green suit. And he has just the Roddy Piper punch gimmick. So overall, I like both the Million Dollar Men. I prefer the black suit one over the green suit one. They did one without the suit. I've never gotten it. I need to, to track it down. Look, there are certain toys you can point to and say that's why that toy line was successful, right? Optimus Prime and the G1 Transformers line. Uh, Snake Eyes in the G.I. Joe line for the WWF Hasbros for this vintage run. It's the Wave 1 Hogan. This might be one of, if not the most popular wrestling figures of all time. He still has his body slam action. He still looks great. I know there were other Hogans that came along later, looked better. 
at least in my opinion and most other people's opinions, but this is still a good figure. It's still a great depiction of Hulk Hogan. It came out when he was still the king of the friggin' world. It's a good figure. I really enjoy it. I'm happy to have it in my collection, and I'm really happy that it was part of the first batch I got. The only problem with it was that I got it at the same exact time I got this Hogan, and I do prefer this one. This is my dis main display Hogan, but both of these are actually very good, and I kind of hate that they're both hated on because I, I'm, I'm going to stick by this. I think this is kind of what helped sell the toy line, were these two Hogans. The last of my original assortment of figures, and I'm going to be honest with you, this one is often cited as the worst, worst Hasbro figure of all time. I don't agree with that. This guy is very easily in my top 10. I adore the Rick Rude. I love the pose. I love the expression. I love the body. I always hear people say, well, it doesn't work because they gave this body to the 123 kid. Or, oh, it's weird because Rick Rude was so well defined and he doesn't scale well with other figures. Scale doesn't exist in the Hasbro line. <laughs> it doesn't. It, I'm sorry, it doesn't. Jake the Snake Robert, here, one sec, one sec, here. To prove my point, right? Here's Jake the Snake Roberts. Here's Hulk Hogan. Jake is the same height as Hulk Hogan. You want to know what Jake was not in real life? 6'7". He was not the same height as Hulk Hogan. Scale does not exist in the Hasbro line. I think people get kind of up in arms about this for weird reasons. I love this recruit. It is one of my absolute favorite WWF Hasbro figures. I made a review of this guy before I did most any other Hasbro figures. It might be one of my favorite Rick Rudes of all time. I adore this figure. What's even better is his is his thing, right? So you get this guy in a headlock, and then boom, you can do a Rude Awakening. That's amazing. I love that. Rick Rude is the best figure from this original assortment for me. He's my favorite one. But now we can get into the broader collection. Getting into figures I've just picked up over time, this is actually a pretty recent addition to the collection. This is the original Hulk, uh, Bre uh, Bret Hart. I think this was maybe Series 3, I don't know. Um, the best Bret Hart is the Series 8 Bret Hart, I believe, the one that has a darker skin tone. This one is still really solid though, you can see though, the heart on mine is coming off. That's a shame, but still, great little Bret Hart. My favorite wrestler of all time, so you better believe I needed to track this guy down. Uh, but, you know, like I said, not the best Bret Hart in the collection. Akeem the African Dream. You gotta love this guy, right? Oh, no, you don't. He has Andre's action, but it doesn't work on him. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm not gonna, like, do the same tired routine about Akeem. What I am gonna say is I prefer the one-man gang, and I'm really happy that Zombie Sailor is giving us a one-man gang. He looks spectacular. But Akeem is still a figure in the collection. Still happy to have him. Just, you know... Like I said, I would have preferred One Man Gang over Akeem. Oh, it's Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Uh, I really like Hacksaw here. This is the original Hacksaw. He doesn't have the blonde hair, but he still has his 2x4. It's great. Um, my one problem is I wish I could have the this arm down and this arm up. Can't. They're connected. Um, but still, very good Hacksaw. More than worthy to be what I think was Hacksaw's first figure ever made. Um, and I'll say the one I prefer. I've had chances to get the blonde hacksaw, and um, I'll get it one day. But for now, I, I prefer the just normal brunette hacksaw, Jim Duggan. Uh, the man who wrestled in the very first WrestleMania, or the first match, the very first WrestleMania, I should say, Tito Santana. Using the Jake the Snake Roberts body, it still works here. I'm not big on the gimmick, but it does work for Tito Santana. Um, he has his little hair tied up in the back of the ponytail. Overall, good figure of a very good wrestler, but kind of like Tito himself, I don't think anyone is jumping at the bit to remember the Tito Santana action figure. He, 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 he was a good hand, good figure, someone who you need on the shelf, but probably not front row material. Look at this dude, he is more square than Spongebob. <laughs> it's IRS, he's using his the stomping gimmick unfortunately, it's a, getting to the point where it's broken on him. It doesn't go as uh, naturally as it used to, but still, great paint. Always enjoyed IRS, uh, Erwin R. Scheister, if you will, Mike Rotunda, Bray Wyatt's dad. Um, really like IRS. He's great. Uh, 
I, I don't know how you could have made this figure better. Maybe if he had a briefcase, that would have been fun. Truth be told, IRS, one of those cases where it's like, I remember the gimmick fondly, but I can't think of a single IRS match I enjoyed. This might be the greatest irony I've ever seen in an action figure. This is Rick the Model Martell, a wrestler who exemplified loving themselves and loving their appearance. He's He has discoloration, but only in his face. And I felt so bad for this Rick the Model Martell who could no longer be the model that I bought him for a dollar. I, 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 I need to get another Rick the Model Martell, but I can't get rid of this guy. I feel genuinely bad that he's lost his face. It's like some horrible, like, Grecian tell of the man so beautiful that the only part of him that decayed was the part that he loved the most. Um, but yeah, Rick Mel Martel, he's using the Macho Man body. Great figure. Mine has that unfortunate blemish, but he's still a really solid model. Now this guy's amazing, it's the Warlord. Look at this dude with his Terminator, like, half face. Um, not a great wrestler, but my god, what a presence. I adore the Warlord. Unfortunately, mine is missing a pinky. That happens a lot with these Hogan Slam style figures. And also, as you can see, the gimmick, it works in exactly one arm. It works in this arm, but not that one. It's unfortunate. Still a great little figure. Um... I'm sad that they never did his tag team partner. They never did the Barbarian. For some reason, I had the Berserker, and I keep thinking, oh, that's the Barbarian. No, it's not. I made that mistake with Mattel, I made that mistake with Jax, and I made that mistake with Hasbro. I don't think they've ever made a figure of Berserker aside from the LJNs. Or am I crazy? I might be crazy. Yeah, we'll go ahead and talk about him now. Here's the Berserker. Um... Very clearly, he is just Hacksaw Jim Duggan again, with a new head. Um, unfortunately, he still has the thumbs up. I don't I don't like it. I'm not big on it. Um, also, the paint on his face is different from the paint on his torso. I thought that might have just been a me problem. No, that's across every version of this figure I've ever seen. Also, across at least some, like a good number to where I think there might have been a running change. The skin on his legs is different from the skin on his face or his torso. So much so that when I got this figure, I thought someone had kit bashed it. I thought like maybe someone took like a hacksaw Jim Duggan torso and repaired their figure. No, that's that's just how this guy looks. Aside from maybe the Berserker, this is my least favorite Hasbro figure. Um, and here's the thing, right? I don't have anything against the Bushwhackers. I like him. He can't stand up. And I've tried. I've tried so hard. I've I can't figure... Oh! Own this figure for a year. That is the first time he has ever stood up for me. Here, we'll pull in the other Bushwhacker. Like, Luke and Butch to get together. I like having them. They look great. Um, but yeah, I'm really not big on the fact that, like, they got two of the more kind of boring gimmicks. And also, I know that part of their gimmick was that they looked the same. But also, having two dudes who look exactly like each other in the same costume right next to each other. It's a little bit boring. But hey... They're Luke and Butch. Everyone loves Luke and Butch. Completing another toy line here, it's Shawn Michaels. He's missing his pinky, unfortunately. Um, but still, nice to have the other rocker. I'll get Marty Jannetty back in here. Look at them. The tag team that kept screaming at each other, You think you have personal problems? I'll show you personal problems. Version 2 Warrior. Missing his pinky, unfortunately. Um, the Warrior I really want is the Version 3 Warrior. That one looks crazy, but I've never been able to find it. This one's fine. I prefer version 1 Warrior to this guy, but still, he's okay. I, 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 You know what it is? He's a little too white. He's a little too plain. He's a little too basic for Warrior. I, I expect vibrant, and for some reason, just the stark white doesn't really convey that. It's Kamala. Now, Kamala, of course, has the old, uh, the, the, the old variant of the Moon Belly Kamala. Possibly the rarest wrestling figure of all time. Um, this figure, you can see, has some stress right there on his pinky, but thankfully he still has it. Here's what I'm going to say about Kamala, because I know the usual tired bit of like, Oh, you can't do that today. Real talk. I, I, so I've listened to interviews with this guy, and I, I listened to him on the Steve Austin podcast. I think his, his other name for wrestling was um, Sugar Bear Harris. What a lovely human being. What a nice-seeming human being. And um, there's a YouTube channel I like called WrestleMe. They did a, a few videos about Kamala. 
and they uh, exposed me to the fact that Kamala actually like was a musician. He wrote some R&B songs, and um, they're good. They're very sweet and personal, and um, I hate that he's no longer with us, because he, he seemed like a genuinely good dude. Um, and, you know, Kamala, like, that's a memorable gimmick. I I'm really happy that he was able to leave his mark on the wrestling business, because you could tell this guy loved wrestling. Um, but thank you, Kamala. Good figure. Good guy. This is one of the best Hasbro figures, period. Um, like, yeah, Mr. Perfect, one of the best ones they ever did. The blue one, I prefer, but this yellow one is spectacular. I think yellow one came out first, maybe. I forget. Um, they don't have the triangle on the back, but don't really care. His gimmick doesn't work on this figure anymore, unfortunately. He has it in this arm, but, well, it's slight enough to where you could do it. I'll show it on my blue one if it's feeling good today. The yellow one, I'm just worried I'm just going to wear that gimmick out fully. But yeah, Mr. Perfect, one of the absolute best figures they ever did for one of the best wrestlers they ever did. If you go down to Cobb County, Georgia, remember the law. I, I love Big Boss Man. It tickled me when I found out Big Boss Man was from Georgia. Um, but yeah, I, I really like Big Boss Man. They did two versions of Big Boss Man. This is the first one that came out. I consider this more like bad guy heel Big Boss Man. He came with a uh, with a baton. I don't have that, but still a really cool figure. Um, it kind of looks like he's supposed to be pointing, but he's not. His finger is just kind of weirdly separated there. His gimmick is just the boss man slam, which is still very good. Good figure. This one's a little bit more plain. I would like to get the later big boss man because that one looks just a little bit more wild. But a great figure of a great wrestler. There's no bull in this British Bulldog. I love the British Bulldog. <laughs> he, he also has the Hogan Slam. Unfortunately, mine is frozen. Oh, wow, that is stiff as shit. Okay, yeah. Um, good figure. Not the best Davy Boy we ever got, but a really good Hasbro figure. Um, I know um, Hastel Toys, they're doing a new British Bulldog that's going to be his Summer Slam attire, and you're going to get um, Diana Hart with it. I don't know if I need that one. I really like this British Bulldog, but, you know, I might get it. I don't know. I'm going back and forth on it because I, I do really like that match with Brett. But don't let that one d distract from the fact that this is a wonderful Davy Boy Smith. Narcissus! Yeah, there was a point where he was going to be named Narcissus, but then he became Lex Luger the Narcissist. Um, anyone who watches OSW, this is Mr. OOC's boy. And honestly... My mom's boy? Uh, my mom really liked Lex Luger for some reason. Um, their favorites were Arn Anderson, Anderson, Dusty Rhodes, Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor, God. Lex Luger. <laughs> I really love this figure, though. Uh, I love the attire he had as the narcissist. Really spectacular figure. I wouldn't quite say he is a front shelf figure, but he is very, very, very close to being one. He has the Hogan Slam, which is still great condition on mine. Just everything about this guy is so good. Um, I kind of hate they never got to do the red, white, and blue Luger in the Hasbro line, but in all honesty, he already had one of the best figures in the line, so why bother, dude? This is great. This is peak. I swear to God, every time I see Sid, I just think about the A A Attitude Era podcast. Every time Kevin does his Sid impression, it's like, I hope I see you in my nightmares, Bob. That's great. <laughs> but yeah, I love this Sid. He's another one who's just using the Hogan Slam. His is a little bit worn out, but look at this dude. Look at the slouch they gave him the head. He looks like a freaking horror movie villain. He looks like Michael Myers about to like come at you. It's so good. I adore Sid. Real talk. I know like the internet wrestling community, we all joke like, oh, well, Sid was never really good, was he? Sid was great. And you want to know how I know Sid was great? Because we all like talking about him like this. Sid is amazing. Figure is great. Look, he was like chiseled in. Look at his lack of nips. That's weird. I'm looking now. Some of, most of them have sculpted in nips. Here, let me let me pull Sean in here. You see, he has a slight little little sculpted bit here, right there on the peck, right there on the boob. So there is a nipple there. They just never painted it. For some reason, with Sid, they were, they were so scared of him. They never even sculpted in the nipples. <laughs> That's the power of Psycho Sid. 
one of the best looking tag teams all together. It's De Demolition, and I have an extra one of their BDSM masks, thanks to uh, Echo Base here in Savannah. Um, I got X, Smash, and Crush. They all still look great. Unfortunately, as you can see, due to the mask, they do get a little paint rub on their noses, so be aware of that. Don't take them off and on too much, but, you know, this is fine. Um, I'm just not that big a demolition person, but these figures really are fun. And, you know, until I get my preferred crush, which is the, uh, Doink, brah! You're making kids cry, brah! Doink. This is a really fun addition to have. Tatanka! Um, I really don't know much about Tatanka. I watch some matches of his. I think he's an alright wrestler. I, I kind of hate to say it, the most I know about Tatanka is the fact that, um, Jay Hunter does not like Tatanka. <laughs> But, uh, I think the talk is fun. Uh, I kind of hate that they gave him the Texas Tornado body. Not because it's a bad body, but because it makes no sense to Tatanka for me. But, you know, decent enough figure. Uh, we have Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and I still have my Sears. It's great. So this is the second version of Brutus. Um, I prefer it to version one Brutus. At the same time, I don't know if Brutus the Barber Beefcake needed, needed another figure. That said, this one is really, really solid. I like this figure a lot. I love his bugged out eyes. Um, I could make some of the usual jokes, but I'm, I'm trying to avoid that this video. A thing I'll point out is I actually read his book uh, recently. This dude, like, I, I know you guys have probably heard of the parasailing accident. Um, I'm amazed he's alive. Like, it, it sounds like that was a horrible, horrible nightmare. So I just want to point that out. Like, Bruce the Barber Beefcake, he has gone through some shit. Um, and this is a very good figure. I hope he got a good royalty for this. This guy was on my front shelf until very recently, and I, I, I debated for a long time, but I did push him back after a little bit to put Yokozuna on the front shelf. Um, but this guy is special. He's missing his tattoo. He has some pain blemishes, but that doesn't matter, dude. This is John Tenta. This is the earthquake. This is one of the best human beings to ever wrestle. This is one of the best big men in wrestling history. I'm, you know what? People are going to hate me for saying this. As a performer, as a wrestler, Peak Earthquake was a better big man to me than Peak Undertaker or Peak Vader. Earthquake was amazing. He had a great character. He had a great look. He had a great persona. I love the Earthquake a lot. Um, I wish he got more figures. I really do. And I would love for Mattel in their retro line to eventually give us an earthquake that matches the Typhoon in the back. But I'm so glad that when Hasbro made Earthquake, they gave him his singles attire because I do prefer him in the blue. We are now getting to the people who I keep on the front shelf of my Hasbro shelf. On the front row, I should say. Um, Yokozuna, one of the best figures they ever did. The physical largest and heaviest figure they ever did. He has a slam feature. The head sculpt is great. Everything about this Yoko is wonderful. They did do a second version in the green card series that was white. Wait, no, no, it was still black pants, and then it had the white kind of uh, pelvic piece. Um, I do prefer this one, just because when I think Yokozuna, I think red. This figure, just really, really, really good. One of the m most unique figures in the entire series. One of the standouts. It more than deserves to be a front row figure. And it's probably just outside of my personal top 10 for the toy line. Skinner! Yeah, you better believe that Skinner is a front row figure. This is the beauty of the Hasbro line. They put so much detail into the nobodies. Mattel, if they did a Skinner, it would be a budget figure, because who's going to buy Skinner? But Hasbro, you get the sculpted pants, you have the sculpted shirt up here, you have this great gimmick that they also use for Warrior and... Uh, the giant, Giant Gonzalez. Um, such an amazing figure for a guy no one cares about. Wow. Like, I, I, I love this figure because to me, this just perfectly represents why the Hasbro line is so beloved, is in this Skinner. Of course, Bam Bam is front row. Thankfully, my Bam Bam still has all his tattoos, still really well painted. Great condition, Bam Bam. He has a slam, he has his head tattoos. God, this Bam Bam is just wonderful. And I know, like, some people, Bam Bam might not be everyone's cup of tea. Some people might prefer ECW Bam Bam. But I think that this is probably the best Bam Bam Bigelow figure ever made. It's just the tops, man. 
So Shawn Michaels had three figures in the line. He, of course, had his Rockers figure back here. He had a red and white Heartbreaker Shawn. I'm hunting that one down. But this I adore. Kind of more heel Shawn with the silver and the black and the silver glasses. What a great looking figure. He's still using the Macho Man body. It works so well for Shawn Michaels. One of the standout figures of all time for both Hasbro and for Shawn Michaels as a performer. Wonderful, wonderful toy. Um, granted, I do still prefer the Brett as both a figure and as a wrestler. But Sean is one of the greatest of all time. And I'm so happy that he got three, honestly, pretty good figures out of this line. That's more than a lot of people got. Someone who very well might be on my Mount Rushmore of wrestling performers. Scott Hall, Razor Ramon in his black and red. His gimmick still kind of works. It's on its way out. But God, I love this guy. Um, Razor did come with some chains. I don't have them anymore. But man. I adore this figure. He's using the, um, I think they first used this with Macho King, the kind of clothesline figure. It works so well for Scott Hall, Razor Ramon. And I do kind of wish they would have given us Razor. Wait a minute, they did give us Razor in purple, didn't they? They did two versions of Razor, and now I think I'm going crazy because I can't remember if it was purple or yellow. Oh, I'm going to have to do some research. In any case, I want to get the other Razor Ramon eventually. But I really like how unique this one is, because I don't think we've ever gotten this attire again, save for maybe Jax. I know Mattel hasn't done one in this attire. Another figure that is just outside my personal top five. This is Giant Gonzalez. Not a great wrestler, but what a great looking figure. Oh my god. I did a review, and I literally point out, the thing that's great about this figure is it showed us what Vince thought Giant Gonzalez could look like. They want him to look like some weird giant abomination. And they went about the wrong way with the uh, with the uh, air spray painted uh, friggin' tights. But look at this dude. He's amazing. Um, he has a good gimmick, same one as Skinner. And here's my favorite thing about him, right? So for a long time, the one rule about scaling in the Hasbro line was no one could be taller than Andre. Well, when this figure came out, they changed it. Now it was, no one could be taller than Giant Gonzalez. So, right now, the two tallest Hasbro figures are Andre the Giant and Giant Gonzalez. And, out of all the figures I own, to my knowledge, they are still the tallest two Hasbro or Hasbro-alike figures. I've not messed with Zombie Sailor Toys Andre. I want to get it eventually. Uh, I'm hoping it actually keeps that rule, because I do really enjoy the idea that the tallest is always going to be Giant Gonzalez, and the second tallest is always going to be Andre. I feel like messing with that, it would be kind of defeating the, the purpose, because it's an homage to this toy line. This toy line didn't have many rules, and the only real rule they had for scaling, like I said, was Andre second tallest, Giant Gonzalez is the tallest. It's the Mountie! I adore the Mountie. He has his shock stick, he has everything you could possibly want from a Mountie figure, it is so good. Um, one of my absolute favorites from this entire line. Uh, really, I think this is the first figure I ever got from Echo Base. This was how I figured out that they were decently on the level, was they gave me a really good deal on, on this Mountie. Um, so, one of the best figures in the line. Really adore the Mountie. One of my favorite, just kind of goofy gimmicks of all time. We have a dead man walking. It's The Undertaker. Uh, no jacket, not the purple taker, just one of the basic original takers. Um, I still really like this figure. I think they captured Taker's energy perfectly with the eyes, and then when you look at it straight on, the brim of the hat kind of covers it up. Wonderful little figure. He also has the clothesline feature. It works a bit better on him than it did on Razor. I adore this Taker. Um, that said, he's not quite a top five figure for me. These next five I'm going to show you are, in my opinion, my personal favorite figures from the entire toy line. I don't feel as though there's any Hasbro figure that can match these guys for me personally. And the number one, or number five rather, is Dusty. Dusty was one of my mom's favorites. Uh, this Dusty's always been one of my favorites. Unfortunately, my Dusty has a broken gimmick, but still, what a wonderful looking figure. His yellow spots, the screaming face, it's so good. It's perfect. Now, he does have the Rowdy Roddy Piper stepping, but I never have issues balancing him, unlike Rowdy or the Bushwhacker that had this. I really, really, really adore that Dusty Rhodes 
such a good figure. My number four has to go to Texas Tornado. Um, I really like Kerry Von Erich. I've seen so many of his matches, and he was really something special. Um, and I love that you get the Tornado Punch. You can wind him up a few times, and then there you go. He has the Tornado Punch. It's such a good figure. I wish they had kept this gimmick to just him, but of course they gave it to Tatanka as well. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful figure. And one that's probably going to get a little bit pricey considering that Iron Claw movie's coming out. Full disclosure, I'm reviewing these figures um, very early into December. I haven't seen it yet. I'm very excited to see it. I really feel like that's going to be like one of the standout movies of the year for me. These next three are going to be very tough because I'm not just kind of deciding between favorite figure, but also like favorite wrestler to some extent. Number three has to be Macho. So after I got that first group from the flea market, I immediately went online and I got this Macho. This Macho was the front shelf for a while. Um, just a perfect figure of Macho Man. Just a perfect, perfect figure. I love the yellow. I love the uh, orange trunks. The only thing that's wrong is I wish they had painted in his wristbands and his knuckle tape. Other than that, what a wonderful version of Macho. He can do his elbow drops. He stands there. One of the great examples of this toy line. I'm going to bring them out at the same time because I can't choose between these two. Mr. Perfect, Bret Hart. Blue Mr. Perfect. I think this was Series 7 or Series 8, Darker Skin Bret Hart, the one that has the four hearts on the leg. These two are the best figures from the Hasbro line to me. I adore everything about them. A great thing about Brett, uh, Mr. Perfect, they remembered his yellow on the back. Um, they remembered the Mr. P on his boots. He can still do his gimmick somewhat so. Let me... So typically, you would put a figure in there. I'm not going to do that because I just don't want to launch one. But then you hold the arm, and then you go like that. And the idea is that you just gave them a really cool-looking suplex. And then Brett, a little bit easier of a gimmick. It's just a punch, but that works. If I had to get rid of every figure in this collection, I couldn't get rid of the Brett Hart or the Mr. Perfect. From where I'm sitting right now, these two might be my favorite wrestlers of all time. Brett, I've known that for a while. Mr. Perfect, I'm just kind of discovering that this year. Um, but two amazing performers, two amazing human beings, two amazing figures, and to me, the ultimate examples of how Hasbro did these figures so well. The Bret Hart and the Mr. Perfect. But now that we've talked about all of the original Hasbro figures I own, we're now going to go into their successors. And the first line we should start with is probably the first line that came out, the Mattel Retros. Let's start the Mattel Retros with the first retro I ever bought, which was the Mankind. Um, I was actually really hesitant to get into this line, but for some reason, Mick Foley was always able to drag me in, and I'm really glad I got it. This Mankind is really incredible. As you can see, it's an update of the clothesline mold, so you still have the gimmick, but now the arm is articulated. Um, you have the mandible claw, which is great. Um, I don't know how you could have done this Mankind any better, to be honest. Now, I will point this out because it's something that really disappointed people at the time. The Mattel Retros just straight up do not jive with the Hasbros. The Mattel Retros are more inspired by than a continuation, so you had to be on board with that. But they did make some pretty impressive figures. We're going to look at some good, some bad, but I want to get this clear right now. This is my favorite retro. The only ones that even come close to how much I like this guy are the NWO Macho Man, the Jim Neidhart, and maybe the Vader. Well, we'll talk about it when we get there. So this is from one of the Mattel Creations 4-packs. This is when they were redoing the orange cards, the canceled set. They had done a Diesel. I'm, I'm afraid I don't have that Diesel. I want it. Him and the Vader, or him and the Kane look amazing. Don't have them. But the orange card set was this Lex Luger along with Doink, Tugboat, and, oh lord, um, Greg the Hammer Valentine in his Rhythm and Blues attire. It was all just supposed to be like, these are the figures that had concept art done, or they were, they were going to be made, but they were canceled, or they just never make it to the, uh, to, to, to print. Um, so, you can see Luger here is using one of the new molds. For John Cena, they did an attitude adjustment gimmick. They chose to give that one to Luger. I'm fine with it. Um, it does still give him a little bit of difference from his original narcissist look, but 
I do prefer it quite a bit to this USA Luger. Look, I'm never going to say no to a Stone Cold. I really like this Steve Austin, even though he's like the most plain guy here. A couple of things, he does have a defect at the top of his head that's been there ever since I bought the thing. And he's a little bit plain in terms of the head sculpt. But overall, I'm happy to have a Stone Cold. Looks great on the shelf. And just like Mankind, he is also using the updated clothesline gimmick. Still works great. Really good figure. They did babyface doink. So I don't have him, but the Hasbros did do a doink, but it was the uh, Evan Bourne doink, the Hill doink, the, the best doink. This is supposed to be babyface doink. Uh, he is using an update of the old Texas Tornado gimmick. So watch it spin. Looks great. I really like this doink. He's the only person aside from Texas Tornado who I enjoy seeing use that gimmick. And I like his head sculpt. It's very goofy. Um, Something about him having a sex doll face is just like, yeah, yeah, that's doink all right. Goldberg, Goldberg. Weirdly enough, they did like old man Goldberg, which it makes sense. These figures were coming out around the time he had that Survivor Series match with Brock, so I get it. I would have preferred young Goldberg, though. He's doing an update of the jumpers. So now they just go into his torso as opposed to shoot his uh, head up like a Pez dispenser. And you can see... Yeah, it's nothing too great. I will say this, due to, um, oh god, what is it called? I'm actually for blanking on the spear. Based on Goldberg's spear, um, this is probably the best wrestler to ever get the jumper gimmick, even if it's still not great. Rhythm and Blues, Greg the Hammer Valentine. I'm sure someone out there cares about this. I'm I'm not one of them. I don't have a honky tonk. I'm still waiting to find one in really good condition. This guy is fine. I just, I don't. So many companies all try to do this figure all at once. This is the one I got. I don't care. He's the least interesting person from that orange card four pack to me. Now this is a little bit more interesting. We have The Rock, the people's champion, and they went with Attitude Era Rock, which I think is a very good call. Now he has an update of the Hogan Slam gimmick, which I'll be honest, I do prefer to the Attitude Adjustment gimmick, so I'm glad they gave it to The Rock. Plus, you know, Rock and Hogan are always going to have a little bit of a connection in my head due to their amazing WrestleMania 18 match. They have the tattoo. The Rock is actually a great figure to point this out. When people try to figure out why don't the Mattels work as well with the Hasbros. Here's the thing. Let me pull out Mr. Perfect. That is not a good likeness to Mr. Perfect. It's very cartoony, very stylized. Mattel tried to actually give proper likenesses to these wrestlers. So you can see right there, that's the difference in design philosophy. They wanted these guys to be a little bit more accurate, and as a result, they lost some of the more outlandish colors and gimmicks and, in all honesty, the charm. Um, I still really like the Mattel Retros, but I'm very thankful that I got this rock uh, right here in this video, more or less just to help better illustrate the point that they don't mesh that well together, but they are a good continuation, and that's what they were meant to be. There's Triple H. Um, Triple H sucks. I, I like Triple H a lot. I want a good retro of him. But this jumper, man. Like, I don't like this attire. I don't like clean shaven Triple H. Like, it, there's so many better looks and so many better gimmicks you could have given Triple H. I, this is one of the weaker figures for the retros for me. Now, this one's pretty fun. There was a four pack that had the Heart Foundation. So, Bret Hart, Jimmy Hart, and Jim the Anvil Nightheart. They put Nikolai Volkov in that set. Weird inclusion, but what a good figure. Now he has one of the new gimmicks, which is the stomp gimmick. Basically you take this leg and boom, he kicks. Um, very simple, but it gives you a very clean looking figure that looks great in the style. Good little Nikolai Volkov. Hat does not come off, but very good figure. I wish I had the Iron Sheik to go with him. From the very first four pack, that was like a WrestleMania one four pack. It had Cowboy Bob Orton, Mr. T, uh, mean Gene Okerlund, and of course, a new Rowdy Roddy Piper, WrestleMania 1 Rowdy Roddy. What's great is you can take the kilt off, so now you can have a ring attire Rowdy Roddy Piper, something Hasbro never did. He also has the kick gimmick. Um, unfortunately, on my Rowdy Roddy Piper, it has a hair trigger, so a lot of times, he'll just kick while he's just sitting on the shelf by himself. That said, it's still a very fun figure, and in all honesty, I prefer this one to the Vintage Roddy. 
I actually did a four pack of the, or I did a review of the four pack that Jerry the King Lawler is a part of. He came with Undertaker, Paul Bearer, Vader. He was the odd man out there, but still a pretty well done retro. He's using an update of the punch from uh, Jake the Snake Roberts. It does work for Jerry the King Lawler. Overall, decent figure. Not my favorite here. Not my favorite performer. But I'm glad that he finally got some type of retro love. All right. Shawn Michaels is great. I've sung his praises in this video already. This Shawn Michaels from the retro line, that's supposed to be his return uh, run. This sucks. This is the worst figure in my entire collection, be it retro, Hasbro, any of the other sequel series. This is the worst one. It doesn't look like Shawn. The body is wrong and weird. He has the kick gimmick, but not really, as you can hear. I think, oh my God, did I just break it? Oh, that's right. His is in reverse. His is in reverse so you can do sweet chin music. Okay. Yeah, that's so impressive looking. Um, I don't like this, Sean. I find it very weird that out of all the retros, the two worst ones, in my opinion, are Sean and Triple H because it feels like they'd have some sway on that, yeah? Using the same exact mold as the Shawn Michaels, this is Jeff Hardy. Not big on Jeff Hardy. I've always preferred Matt, but, you know, it's fine. The head's too realistic. I'm sad they didn't give him the face paint, because you know what would have looked amazing with the Hasbros? Like crazy face painted Jeff. He probably would have blended in better than most of these figures. I was getting really bummed out there, but thankfully we're getting back to the really cool figures. This is Mean Gene Oakland, one of the best retro figures. Someone who should have had a figure all the way back when. He looks amazing. I love his jacket. He has the microphone. He has the Hogan Slam, kind of. I think they called this the Microphone Bash or something. Um, they would use this mold later on for Jimmy Hart, and it's a good mold to use for announcers slash managers. It fits really well, and I love his big cheeky grin. One of my favorites as a kid, still one of my favorites today, Seth Rollins. He's also an updated jumper, but I think it works. Proportionally for him, this fits pretty well. I do kind of wish that they had gone with a set that still had the yellow highlight in his hair. I know he hasn't had that in, like, at this point, like, 11 years, but I don't know. I always liked that because that was the first time I saw Seth was with the, uh, with, with the yellow streak. One of the few big figs in the original run of retros, they did do a Braun Strowman. He has his tattoo. He has a slam feature. It works pretty well. Now, let me just pull this out here so I can prove my point. As you can see, Braun is just ever so slightly shorter than Andre. And also, boop, he is noticeably shorter than Giant Gonzalez. Because like I said, the rule was always, everyone has to be shorter than these two. That's the rule. And I'm glad that Braun followed it, though they didn't make him as big as they could. Boop, boo, doo, doo. One of my favorites from my early childhood days of wrestling, still someone who will always have a soft spot in my heart, it's John Cena. As I said, they made a whole new gimmick for him by giving him the attitude adjustment, and it works. I'm not big on a lot of figures that have that gimmick, but yeah, John Cena should have his own unique gimmick, seeing as how, in many ways, he is the Hogan of a whole new generation. But I really like the John, I like the color combination they gave him. He is just cartoony enough with his face that he kind of fits better with the Hasbros than most, but still not quite. But I do really appreciate just how they went with this figure. From the Undertaker 4-pack, this is the Vader. This guy is so good. One of the best retro figures ever. So awesome. Only issue is his gimmick does not work. Like, it just straight up does not work. Um, but really well done, Vader. Looks incredible almost matches just because his mask covers up the more realistic details of his face he almost matches with the hasbros but still not quite but i'm just happy he finally has a figure in this style one basically the whole reason i bought the orange card set was for this tugboat he's just incredible using the same mold as the vader in fact i think he used this mold before vader but he has the same gimmick it also doesn't work for him but oh my god, look, he's doing the woo woo little face. He's great. <laughs> um, listen, I would like to get more modern wrestlers in this style, but I feel like the Mattel retros, at the very least, really shine when they do these older performers um, that kind of would have been from the same time period. Because the Tugboat, the Vader, the Jerry the King Lawler, the Mean Gene, 
I'm sorry, but they always are just going to fill me with more joy than even wrestlers I really love, like Seth Rollins and John Cena, because they would have never had Hasbros. These guys getting Hasbros, though, it's almost like you should have had one from the beginning, and I'm happy for you, you know? The Retro Warrior. He's also using the Attitude Adjustment Style gimmick, but still works really well. I love his color combination, very similar to the Wave 1 color combination, and I'll be honest, this is my favorite Hasbro style warrior, at least that I own. I think he blows the Hasbros out of the water. Really good figure. Brock Lesnar, somehow proven to still be terrifying even when he's four inches tall. He has the body slam gimmick. Works incredibly well for him. I really like the Brock. The, like Between the tattoos, his really angry expression, he has so much more personality than some of the newer retros had. So for that reason, I would definitely rank him amongst the top when it comes to modern talent within the line. I said that Triple H, Sean, and Jeff Hardy were my least favorites of the retros I own. Alongside them is Cowboy Bob. I'm, there's nothing here for me. The head doesn't look great. The hat doesn't come off. His brace doesn't really even look like a brace. It's a shame because in a four pack they had a wonderful Rowdy Roddy Piper and an excellent Mean Gene. You'd want more. From, from Cowboy Bob's only Hasbro style figure. It just, it doesn't deliver. I'm sorry. They don't want none? No, they don't want none. AJ Styles, one of my favorite wrestlers active today. Bit weird in the face department on this figure. He's squinting just a bit. But he has a good gimmick. You can give the phenomenal forearm. Really love this AJ. Even if he is just a touch too tall, but again... There is no scale in Hasbro's or Retro's, lest we forget. Now, they did two Kevin Owens in the Retro line. I don't remember which one this is. I think this is the second Kevin Owens. Uh, Kevin Owens, one of my big favorites. He also has the Vader slash Tugboat gimmick. Doesn't work on him either. It's a shame. But I'm so happy to have Kevin Owens in this style. What a phenomenal looking figure for one of the best wrestlers to ever grace the WWE really adore this guy. I know we've not been doing this in any particular order, but this contingent we're going to have to do back to back because they gave us a wonderful NWO lineup. I unfortunately don't have the sting they did. I would love to track it down at some point, but they gave us a wonderful, wonderful toy lineup of the NWO. Probably my favorite one in figure form. And we're starting here with Hollywood Hogan, someone who many people had made customs of before, but this is the official, the real deal, if you will. Wonderful proportions on this guy. I love his expression. So good. And he does have the kick. So, at long last, we have a Hasbro that does the leg drop. I know that sounds weird, but yeah, think about that. With as gimmick heavy as the Hasbros were, they never did a figure of Hogan doing the leg drop. And I don't know if you noticed this, it's because they never did anything with the lower body. They always valued giving you a stable standing base over anything else. So, I do like that the Retros did start implementing leg gimmicks. I'm amazed it took them this long to do it with a Hogan. Uh, at the same time, it does lead to some issues sometimes because they will start kicking on the shelf. <laughs> but, you can't help it. It's a really well done Hogan, but not the best in this NWO set. At the same time, he's not the worst either. Um, they did do six, better known as X-Pac, probably. Uh, he's a jumper. He looks fine. I like his expression and his attire. I'm not big on that because for some reason they did Scott Hall and Six in red, and then they did Kevin Nash and Hogan in white. I would have preferred that they were all just white, especially Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. I don't know why, but toy companies love mismatching them. Um, but overall... Six is perfectly acceptable. Speaking on Big Sexy Kevin Nash, this is just a wonderful figure of the guy. He, of course, has his um, this kind of Hogan slam down action. Uh, now, they've done two Kevin Nashes in the retro line. They, of course, did Diesel. Need to track it down still. But this figure, just wonderful, wonderful, wonderfully made. One of my favorite Kevin Nash figures ever. And it's great, because I got this just as Click This, the Kevin Nash podcast, was coming out. And uh, I, I got a lot of new respect for Kevin Nash. He was always one of my favorite performers, but, uh, hey, you can tell one hell of a story. Going from Kevin Nash back to one of my all-time absolute favorite wrestlers ever, Scott Hall. 
now in his NWO attire. And you can see what I mean. Kevin Nash, he was just the normal NWO white. Here we have an outsider Scott Hall. I would have preferred either they were both outsiders, they were both just plain NWO. He also has the slam feature. It works for him though. And I do like that they remembered to give all the NWO classes. Um, aside from the color mismatch, they're a very well done squadron of figures. And if you go back to the original retro line, you might be able to add a fifth member. I said earlier that my three favorite figures from this line were the Mankind, the NWO Macho, and the Jim the Anvil Nightheart. Well, here's the NWO Macho, and just look at this guy. He also has the slam, but they have the tassels down here on the boots, the wonderful Madness t-shirt, the sunglasses, the expression. This is such a awesome Macho Man figure. One of the best ever done in my opinion. Probably my favorite NWO Macho figure to be honest. And it works great. It was weird when we first got him because all we had were him and Sting and no other NWO members. But now since we have that NWO 4 pack, this figure is now just even better because you can put him in what is possibly the greatest stable of all time. I, I don't know, for my money, it's always gonna be the Horseman, but NWO definitely has its moments. And look at that, from the four packs, we got our first ever official manager. I say official, our first ever manager in the Mattel line. For whatever reason, Hasbro never touched managers. And the Mattel, they've just now given us Jimmy Hart and Paul Bearer. They need to give us a Bobby the Brain Heenan. We need a Bobby the Brain Heenan. If you ever watch my top 10 uh, wrestlers who need a Hasbro style figure, Bobby Heenan is the number one. But Jimmy Hart is great. He has the same slam as Mean Gene. Uh, he of course has his megaphone that looks wonderful. Uh, and his face expression's a little weird. I'm not big on it. I don't like the big open mouth. Or rather, I would prefer a more open mouth. This very small mouth is just kind of strange, but a good little figure. I keep talking about the Undertaker 4-pack. Well, here's the Taker. They gave us Phantom of the Opera Taker with the mask. And I gotta say, I prefer it to the Vintage Taker. To be fair, I also just prefer this attire to his older attire. This might be my favorite Undertaker look ever. And he has the Hogan Slam. It just works so well. But it works even better because this is the Taker that came with a Paul Bearer. Look at Paul Bearer. They got his face perfectly. They remembered the urn. He also has the slam action. They remember to make him a little bit chubbier than the others. These two together might be my favorite twosome in at least the Mattel line, possibly this entire series of figures, even including the Hasbros. Alongside the Jimmy Hart and the Nikolai Volkov, they of course did another Bret Hart. And this one's fine. It's definitely more his tag team days. I'm glad to get another Brett, but I mean, it doesn't hold a candle to that Brett, let's be honest. But the reason this Brett's great is because the figure who I would honestly say might be the best in the entire retro line came with him. Jim the Anvil Neidhart looking perfect. Look at that wild expression. Look at the goatee. He has the attitude adjustment gimmick. In a line where I keep saying they need to go more wild with the expressions, they gave Jim his huge yelling face and it's perfect it captures him better than almost any other figure of jim the anvil Nightheart ever has so my favorite tag team finally has a wonderful duo of figures and kind of like i said before with the tugboat jim should have had this figure all the way back when he did have a figure in hasbro but it was during his uh, new heart foundation days but this man this is class this is tops this is the best mattel has ever done but of course, Mattel's not the only ones making figures these days. There were many people who were passionate about the Hasbro line, and they were inspired by the Mattel Retros to start doing their own homage lines. And we live in a wonderful age now where we have so many quality companies doing so many retro figures. And I wanna track down more, but I'm gonna show you the very small selection I have from other companies that are doing Honestly, better figures than even the Mattels did. But first, I want to show you some great customs. So, there's two customs I own. I got them from an eBay seller. I'm going to look up their name just to give them proper credit. Uh, I got this American-made Hogan from them. And I will say this. It's a little too big. It's a little too tall for the, for the uh, Hasbros. 
But I've always loved this attire, and it looks so good. It was hand-painted, I can feel it, but it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful custom. But I got this because they had another figure that really drew my eye. Owen Hart in a King of Hearts attire. This is incredible. This is perfect. Owen, of course, another one of the people on my Mount Rushmore, they match so well with Brett almost the same height and it's so good to have Owen because Owen was in the Hasbro line but it was a high energy Owen this is the black heart the king of hearts Owen and it's so good so good these customs I want to give them a shout out they are part of the collection but now we'll get into actual other companies that have been producing these figures so, not too long after the retros went on hiatus, but before the four packs started coming out, the first company I remember hearing anything about was Zombie Sailor Toy. However, it took a while for Zombie Sailor to get his toys out. In the meantime, I believe it was Chella who were the first on the scene. Chella, then Wrestling Trader, I don't really know what they are now, but they are still producing figures, and I like these figures a lot. I will say this, for most of these I'll say they don't work with the Hasbros because they're not cartoony enough. These guys have the opposite problem. They're a little too cartoony to fit in. Um, they don't have many of the sharp edges, and the head sculpts are often a little less detailed. But I love this atom bomb they did. Done very much in the style of Hogan, uh, but no gimmick. That was the big thing with Cella, was that there's no gimmicks here. It's all just the plastic, the style you're buying. Um, very different attire from the official Hasbro atom bomb. Very different um, pose. So that was the thing I remember people were worried, like, well, is this going to devalue the green card atom bomb? And there's no way. That atom bomb has a totally different costume, totally different gimmick. This is not going to confuse anyone, as long as you're doing your due diligence. But it is a worthwhile alternative if you don't want to track down that green card atom bomb. And I really do like this one. He also has removable goggles, which I'm... Doesn't he? Am I crazy? No, he does. He does. Yeah. And you can see his face underneath really cool i do prefer keeping those goggles on though there we go i really enjoy the cello toys i'm glad that they're still going because we're going to look at some more really awesome figures hayabusa for my money one of the best wrestlers to never enter the wwe they remembered his scars they did a few attires they did a red attire i think they did a gold attire i preferred the blue attire mostly because it's the one i could afford <laughs> um but the thing I love about this Hayabusa is just how eye-catching he is. I was, like, showing friends the, this collection before, and my friend Maddie just immediately focused in on Hayabusa. And how could you not? What a great look for a wrestler. Now, they are modeled after the jumper. They don't actually do the jumping. But when it's just, like, a continuous sculpt, this isn't a bad pose for a wrestler, especially not someone like Hayabusa. Listen, this figure has no right to be this good. But... Big Daddy, Chella giving love to the UK wrestling scene and giving us a Big Daddy figure with a removable top hat, a removable vest. This figure is just the works. He's just great. Um, as much as we love Hogan, right? People don't realize, like, Big Daddy has a, had a similar impact on the English wrestling scene as Hogan had here. And this figure is just perfect. It feels like it should have always been there. And it's even better when you pair it with giant haystacks with the vest. Ah, oh, God, dude. And now, this haystacks isn't really modeled after any particular gimmick. I guess you could make the argument he's kind of modeled after the Andre gimmick. But not really. These two just look so good together. They are my favorite examples of Chella and their style. And just so we can see here, you can see that Haystacks is just ever so slightly shorter than Giant Gonzalez. Big Daddy is shorter than them both. So continuing on with the rule, which is important to me because I don't know, I've chosen a very weird hill to die on. But two wonderful figures. And I kind of wish I could just end it there for Chella, but there is one figure that's not so great that I own. Chella, I'm pretty sure, was the first company to try women figures in the Hasbro style. They did a, uh, a Bull Nakano, which I still want to track down because I love Bull Nakano. And they did Luna Vachon. Luna just looks really off. The proportions are really weird. They're way too small. Like, here, let me pull in 
Well, let me pull in a cello figure, just to like show within their internal scaling. Like I know I said scaling doesn't exist, but also Luna is just way too small. Luna is way too small and you had to spend, what was it, like 30, 40 bucks on Luna? So not the best figure, which is a shame because Luna Vachon, one of the all time great performers, someone who really needs more figures. And unfortunately this just isn't, isn't great. Now I'm gonna say this, I only have two figures from this company, but they are my favorite company doing these kind of Hasbro inspired figures. I'm talking about Hastel Toys, and I'm talking about a tag team I did a video about recently. They did Mabel and Mo. Now here's the thing, right? If I had to break it down for you, these major companies, Zombie Sailor Toys, does their figures as if Hasbro's were made today. They're more detailed, more realistic, and they're wonderful Wonderful for that. Chella goes for a more cartoony, more simple style. Hastel just cracked the code. These guys fit in with the Hasbro's. They look like they came from the same toy line. All they're missing is very slightly. They don't quite have the same gloss, but it still works so well. And you have Mo here. And he doesn't have a gimmick, sure, but he's kind of modeled after the Slam gimmick. Mo is one of my all-time big favorites. Um, OSW, they have this thing they call your boys, basically wrestlers, who weren't good, but they just, they left an impression on you. Mabel is my boy. I love Mabel so much. His, just everything about him, his personality, his men on a mission days, the how crap that was. Um, and then Mo right here, also a big figure, also great, doesn't have a gimmick, but he's kind of doing like the macho man arms. Um, and they remembered like the, the, the black parts of his eyebrows. It's so great to have this tag team. One of the standout tag teams of the new generation and not standout in good ways, mind you, but still standout. And they're wonderful. Um, I have the Mo on pre-order or rather Oscar on pre-order. Can't wait for Oscar to get here. Can't wait to complete this trio. Uh, I have Duke the Dumpster Drowsy on pre-order. Um, I'm gonna keep an eye on them because I don't want some of the newer guys and I think I skipped out on Savio Vega. I might go back and get him later. But this company, they cracked the code. They did it. They are my favorites. I love Chella. I love Zombie Sailor. I love them very, very much and I want to continue supporting them. But this, man. This is what I want. And I could end the video off here, but I'm not, and you're gonna see why in just a sec. As I said, the first one of these series to make it to market was Chella, but the first one to start making moves was Zombie Sailor. And what I really remember was this Sabu they did. I adore this. So this is what I'm talking about, right? Zombie Sailor gives a more realistic style to these figures. They're Design philosophy is what if the Hasbros never stopped? They just evolved to match new tastes as time went on. And Sabu, he has his headdress. He has his finger in the air. All these scars that look so gross. Now, I will say this. This Sabu, I've always had issues standing. So I've given him a DC multiverse stand just to help him up. That's my only issue with him is that he has balance issues. But this Sabu really is just the tops. Alongside Sabu, of course, you have the Downhausen, uh, one of my favorite modern wrestlers. I'm pretty sure this is the first toy he ever had. Now, unfortunately, mine had a defect. He's missing some paint right there on his chest, but I'm fine with it. I, you wouldn't notice it unless you point it out. Uh, he has a removable cape. He's kind of going for the Hogan slam pose, kind of. Of course, there are no gimmicks in these, but what a wonderful figure, especially with that cape. That's why you do Zombie Sailor, right? Is they almost give you like the deluxe version of what a Hasbro could be. Better lightnesses, better paint, better proportions. You'll get cloth goods. You get all these things. And I love them for it. And that's why like I would never like try to deride them. I'm really worried that I was like burying them in Chella a second ago. I love all of them. I love them probably more than I love the Mattel Retros, even though they're great too. Hastel has found my personal favorite look for these figures, but I would say that Zombie Sailor is probably objectively the better toy maker for these, and Chella, of course, just has the widest catalog right now. But there's a reason why I wanted to end up on the Chella figures, or rather on the Zombie Sailor toy figures. So, if I have counted correctly, 
which I probably have not, but if I have, there have been 94 figures shown in this collection so far. That's all the ones I've owned up to this point. I was kind of hoping I would wind up having 99, just for a reason I'm going to show you in a sec, but 94, which means that if I got one more, I'd have 95, which is still divisible by 5. That's a good number. I ordered this boogeyman. It came to me in October. I've not had a chance to review it yet, and then I figured it'd be a really sweet kind of conclusion to this big video if we added number 95, Mike Boogershaw, also known as the Boogerman, um, to uh, the collection. So Bastion Booger, one of the worst gimmicks of all time, often cited as the absolute peak of how crap the new generation could be, but Zombie Sailor Toys in their Heels and Faces line did give us this as a Comic-Con exclusive. Um, it went up for on sale online, and literally the second I saw it, I pre-ordered it because I knew I would need this guy. So let's open him up right here. Let's do it. Come on. Come on out, booger man. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Look at this. So, for anyone who doesn't know, Bastion Booger, his whole gimmick was he was fat and smelly. That was about it. And you'd see him eat and he'd get, like, food in his man boobies. Um, but look at this head sculpt. That's wonderful. The blacked out teeth, the paint on the beard. You have really good posability in the arm so you can go up for a slam. You have here in the waist. Just a wonderful little addition to my now trio of zombie seller toys. I need to pick up more. They're doing a sell right now, and it's a good sell. Um, but just phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal figures. And I'm so happy that this gets to be number 95 in the collection, this Bastion Booger here. And there we go. For our Christmas, for our holiday, whatever special you want to call this, we've gone over every figure I own of my favorite toy line. I adore adore these figures. This is my favorite collection to add to, my favorite assortment to look at. If I had to get rid of every other collection I own, I would keep my Hasbros and the sequel series. These guys are just phenomenal. I'm so happy I was able to share it with you guys. Um, from the bottom of my heart, happy holidays, happy New Year's, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, happy Ramadan. Even if, you know, if you don't celebrate anything, happy today. Happy day to you. Um, thank you guys for watching my videos, putting up with me, putting up with the advent calendar. Um, thank you for sticking around, helping me get to 500 subscribers on YouTube this year. It's been phenomenal. We're going to try to get to 1,000 by next year, but thank you guys for tagging along. And I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you, guys.